What's going on, guys? Welcome back to LOI TV. We're joined today by Sligo Rovers midfielder Greg Bulger. Greg, really appreciate you coming on the show. How are you keeping? Uh, oh, good. Look, I'm just I'm glad to be on the, the real LOI TV. Uh, thanks it. for having That's us. <laughs> I, I look after you, lads. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for having us on, yeah. So, Greg, uh, how has pre-season been? And uh, obviously, after your injury, are you, do you feel yourself coming back to full fitness and to your best now? Um, yeah, obviously pre-season it doesn't uh, doesn't get any easier, it's, um, unfortunately. But uh, no, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been very good. Uh, we've had a good pre-season. Obviously, myself um, being out for so long, uh, I obviously was going to find it probably a bit harder. But I did a good bit over the off-season, over the Christmas and all, just to top up on what needs to be done. My rehab probably wasn't really finished when I got back um, towards the back end of last year. So I had a, had a bit to do myself. So I stayed on top of that. And um, obviously having the last three weeks or that or more uh, training was very, was obviously beneficial to myself. Um, uh, very hard, yeah. But uh, it was, it's, it's been good so far. Uh, I've had no, no issues and uh, it's going really well. Just getting minutes in the tank now. And um, I won't be soon coming along the season, you know. Just then, on obviously your new signing yourself. How have the lads kind of treated you ju since joining? And obviously, there's the likes of Robbie McCourt, your, yourself, Jordan Gibson, Walter Figueroa. Um, have you had to do any initiation songs or anything like that either? Uh, no, no initiations. Not yet. No, not yet. See, we're, because it's because with the COVID, we're kind of just in and we're out. You know what I mean? We have to be careful on that on that uh, side of things. But um, no, the lads since I got here have been brilliant. Um, really good group of lads here. And obviously with the new signings, I think there's, what, there's five or six of us. And then obviously one or two probably came a bit late. They had to quarantine and stuff like that. But basically now I'm just having a crack, you know, in training, getting the work done, um, laughing at how tired and bollocks we are um, <laughs> at each other. But no, it's uh, no initiations yet. I'm sure that'll be, um, that'll be soon enough when things get probably back to normal a bit. Um, or you can, I'm sure there's a buyout clause there if you don't want to do it. But I'm not sure what that is. Davy Callie's uh, <laughs> head of the fines. So, from my side of things, that might be hit, whatever the price is. <laughs> not, uh, not the best singer now, I'm not going to lie to you, lads. But, um, no, the lads been great. Everyone's, everything's been good. Um, obviously, having the crack and train and getting to know the lads as well, apart from all the hard work we're doing. And um, I'm sure I could, obviously... Obviously, we only have so little time together. Um, obviously, you're in training for whatever the two hours, and you can't you can't be hanging around and stuff like that, and kind of staying each other's. Can't be going to other's house and all. So um, it's a bit been a bit weird that way, but um, I'm sure that'll come in time, and the two hours we had together be well spent, you know, in training. So then, obviously, you've moved on now from Shamrock Rovers. Do you, do you feel European European football was a factor there, and is Sligo Rovers the right club for you at this particular time in your career? Yeah, well, look, obviously, look, I had a few options, different clubs and stuff. And I think just one of the factors was probably was, obviously, Sligo, look, Sligo was a big club. It probably hasn't done as done as well as it should have been doing over the last few years. A lot of chopping and changing and stuff. But then, um, obviously, Leem's come in and he's um, probably gave that bit of solidarity uh, to the group and to the club. And then, um, obviously, on the back of having a good year last year, um, getting Europe and knowing Leem, working with Leem before at Pats, I know he's ambitious and... Um, like myself, I still am. I still want to do well. I still want to win. So that hunger is still there. And then obviously on the back of having European football and knowing Liam and the club Sligo is and what he's trying to do, it was probably a no-brainer for me to come up here. And um, and like, like I said, so far, so good. Obviously getting the work done. He's trying to get probably one or two more players in. He wants to be as competitive as he, as he can be. And, um, and yeah, try and do better on last year. I'm sure that's the aim, you know. For sure. Yeah, you speak, you're speaking on how good last season was and Liam Buckley, of course, as well. Has he outlined ambitions to kind of build on last year and what the ambitions are for the side, for the team and for maybe you on a personal level as well? Yeah. Um, from my own point of view, I'm just, I'm just mad to get better. Obviously, look, I've been lucky through my career and I have many injuries and not many, missed many seasons and stuff <laughs> like that. Obviously, last year was probably the first time where I, where I missed a good bulk and good chunk of a season through injury. So from my own point of view, I'm just I'm eager, really eager to get back back on the pitch, um, getting that buzz of going out and playing the games again. I missed it like so. Um, that's my kind of kind of thing about it. Um, but the club obviously with Liam, like I said, he's trying to get he was trying to improve from last year. Um, obviously it's going to be very hard. A lot of teams, the Premier Division and all, they've uh, 
every every team is improving and getting players in, new bodies coming in everywhere. I obviously think the benchmark is still going to be Shamrock Rovers and Dundalk, you know. But um, from our point of view, whatever Liam is thinking, but we want to um, want to try and he wants to improve on on last year. Obviously, we finished in fourth. I think the aim is trying to get Europe again and see how far we go. He's not going to put one specific thing or this is what we want need to achieve, but yeah. just to improve, get good players in, uh, into the group that's already there and just try and improve on it really, you know. Yeah, for sure. You're kind of talking about the players you're bringing in and stuff. One name we keep hearing about from Sligo fans, uh, youngster Johnny Kenny. I think he scored last night in the friendly. How good has he looked so far in pre-season? Yeah, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, I got a fright the other day when he came out of um, training. He had a his school uniform on. I felt old. <laughs> I, felt, you know, I felt really old. <laughs> I forgot what age he was. Three seventeen. Where are you going? Think, yeah. yeah, he's only seventeen. Where are you going? <laughs> but um, yeah, no, he's like he's seventeen. He's good. Good. Uh, head on his shoulders, he wants to do well, he wants to learn. Um, he's been good in pre-season, he's been fit, he's been up there with the runs. He wants to be a player and that's the biggest thing. And he, uh, He's willing to learn and listen and um, he's good, like I said, a good head on his shoulders. But um, he can finish, the boy can finish. He's 17, he's done well. Um, in another way, there's obviously there's a few two lads come back, Romeo and um, Breeze come back into the group as well. They've obviously been a bit late coming back in. But he's and obviously he started a good few of the games and look he's he scored two goals in two game and three games, um, and he wants to run in behind. He's he's I think he has a bright future if he sticks at sticks to what he's doing now, yeah. and um, he can only learn off the lads as well. The strikers at the club and a few senior lads, but um, like you said, don't put too much pressure on him. He's only seventeen, you know, school uniform there the other day, <laughs> um, really hit home with me. I was like, geez, I'm all in, but but um. <laughs> Yeah, no, so look, he just needs to keep working hard, keep doing what he's doing and don't get ahead of himself. That's my me and my advice to Johnny and I'm, I'm sure he won't. He's a good lad. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's going to be obviously a very uh, competitive season this year with a lot of sides strengthening uh, within the Premier Division. The two teams come up into the Premier League as well. Uh, Drogheda had obviously bringing in a lot of good, experienced LOI players and, yeah. and Longford as well, of course, won't be any pushover as well. Are you looking forward to the challenge of the season ahead? Yeah, I'm look, look, looking forward to it. Look, really looking forward to it um, because you just... Like I said, it's it's mad the way the League of Ireland is. There's teams there, a lot of players moving. Like I said, with the length of contracts and stuff like that, it's there's a lot of players moving, come up and move on to different clubs. It's it's hard to get that kind of like core group of players to stay in at one club because there's obviously a lot of movement and all. But um, like I said, Longford will come up and they'll be very good. And um, draw it as well. Like I said, signing signing some big players as well, and then obviously. There was probably nothing between the way the league was last year with the fixtures only being so short, only eighteen games and stuff. There was like, you could have won two games, you could have been fourth, you could have lost two games, you could have been right down the bottom. So it's it's yeah. really competitive. And um, hopefully, obviously this year we get the fuck the full uh, fixture list done. Hopefully, no interruptions this year, please God, touch wood. But um, yeah, it's going to be really competitive, and it's one we're really looking forward to and see how we go because we know every game is going to be so tough, regardless if you're playing a team that's whatever, in the bottom or the top. Every game is going to be so competitive and I think the standard is only getting better. It's a, I think it's a young man's game now, to be honest. It's getting like that. It's, um, but it's really, it's going to be really competitive and uh, looking, really looking forward to the challenges ahead, you know. Yeah, as fans, we're so excited for the season just to kick off. Uh, it's, all right, if you just finish with a few quick fire questions. Oh, Jesus, yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, our first one for you, uh, the, your, fa- the, your favourite player when you were growing up. My favourite player when I was growing up, I ah, was definitely Roy Keane. Roy Keane, yeah. I've had that a few loved... times now, I think, actually, with a few players, yeah. Yeah, Roy Keane was my idol. Only book I've probably ever read, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Roy Keane, I think Keane, it was yeah. a pundit as well. Ah, he's just straight to the point, isn't he? Yeah, he's straight yeah, to the point, it. no messing. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't give too much away, does he? But, uh, <laughs> no, I prefer, I prefer him as a player now in the pundit myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any pre-match routines or superstitions? It's a bit of a weird one, but... Not really. I know some lads be putting on their right sock first and their left sock yeah, and their yeah. right shin guard and all that. Not really. Just I'm just trying to keep it the same every every um every Friday, whatever that be, food and time wise. Yeah. And um obviously taking different supplements like caffeine or something like that at certain times, but not not really rituals, no. Yeah, I wouldn't right. be kneeling down and doing prayers or anything or jumping around or anything like that but just <laughs> literally, literally um, 
literally just to keep the routine that I do every Friday, just during the day, you know. Yeah, this might be a tricky one for you. Uh, the best player you've played with? Best player I've played with, I've played with. I've been lucky enough to play with a few lads now. Um, so I was thinking, yeah. Jesus, do you know what? I'm going to say Jack Bourne, to be honest. I'm going to say really? Jack Bourne. I've, yeah, I know this, this is quick fire now, but um, probably, like, obviously, if I like to keep fat, Ian, Kenny and Brennan and a few lads and stuff, but um, I said Jack Bourne. Obviously, there's Graham Burke as well and stuff. Yeah, Jack Bourne. Yeah, class. Uh, the hardest opponent you've come across? Um, probably, I just want to say two, probably Joseph and Doe or, or, um, or Paddy McCourt. Couldn't get, never get near anyone. An absolute nightmare, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Paddy McCourt comes inside, you just leave him go and I come near him. <laughs> uh, your favourite goal you've scored? Um, my favourite goal, um, probably against Sligo. The year we won the league, it was kind of the game deciding, game deciding um, match. And I scored, yeah. Absolutely shanked one to the top corner. It's the only one two nil against Sligo, I think it was. But uh, yeah, that was his favourite goal because it meant so much, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the final one we have for you, uh, your best moment in football. Best moment in football. Um, probably the same. Probably the same night as that when the when the first me first league with uh, with Saint Pat's. Yeah, definitely that. Definitely that. The first one is always the sweetest one. Class, Greg, really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much and re- uh, best luck for the season as well. Yeah, no problem, lads. Thanks for having us.